Hey everyone, Ro here. Today we discuss the mystery surrounding Sanguinius and the Silent King. General spoiler warning to begin as the events we're discussing today are from across the Warhammer 40k universe, as well as specifically the short story The Word of the Silent King by L.J. Goulding. As always, I really recommend you read the stories for yourself first, as that's the best way to enjoy the lore for yourself, without spoilers. But with that said, let's just jump straight in. So Sanguinius and the Silent King, quite possibly two of the most unlikely individuals you would ever expect to be interlinked. The Silent King freshly returned from his supposed exile, and the Angel, the Primarch who famously gave his life aboard the Vengeful Spirit. However, many moons ago now, these two were surprisingly connected, and since then many speculations and theories have arisen. But just what is the truth of it? Well, that's what we're going to discuss today. Now, this whole premise arose from the short story The Word of the Silent King by L.J. Goulding, and it takes place in the build-up to the devastation of Baal, the tyrannid invasion of the Blood Angel's homeworld. It's been out more than a fair few years now, but it is still an absolutely fantastic short story, as the Blood Angels and Necrons go to war on the world of Gienna led by Dante himself, even giving us a rare glimpse of the legendary Captain Tycho. It really is one of those old school gems. And for those of you who are fairly new to the lore, this event takes place before the fall of Cadia, before the Great Rift has torn the Imperium into two. And we've actually discussed this story a long time ago on the channel, because it brought two legendary figures face to face, Dante, Lord of the Blood Angels, and Sarek the Silent King. And this was well before the Silent King had returned to the tabletop, when he was still nothing more than a mythical figure amongst the lore, a rarefied name mentioned within the Necrons Codex. So as much as it is a fascinating moment now, it was even more unbelievable back then. It really was one of those moments in the lore where you can't quite believe what you're reading, your mind immediately racing to all the what-if possibilities. Now, during the course of the war for Gienna, the Necrons just suddenly stopped fighting, turning about and retreating off the battlefield. And this obviously left the Blood Angels to wonder just what on earth was going on, only discovering in the aftermath of the battle that a Tyranid Hive fleet was approaching the system. Of course the Blood Angels were immediately fearing the worst, realising just what a difficult position they were in, about to become trapped between two foes, the Necrons on the surface and the Tyranids within space. But that's when the unbelievable began to occur. While Dante was meeting with his senior commanders on just what to do next, the Blood Angels were contacted by a herald of the Necrons, inviting Dante to an audience with the Silent King himself. Now, we've discussed Dante's interaction with the Silent King before, and we're focusing more on how it relates to Sanguinius today. However, it's safe to say, in light of the Silent King truly unveiling himself to the galaxy since this time, we can now remove any element of doubt that perhaps used to be there. Aside from having legions of soldiers, his court was described as having 900 Triarch Praetorians standing before his throne, with a whole host of sworn pharaons, and his throne made of a literal temple the Necrons had dropped on to the surface. 
He's described as being taller than the others, which we now know that he is, and that his form is far beyond anything compared to his fellow Necron kin. This was Sarek. This was the Silent King. And importantly, in this interaction, Sarek was wearing a golden mask, moulded into the image of Sanguinius. And whereas Dante thought he was doing this as an insult, demanding an explanation, the Silent King's attendant reveals it is quite the opposite. He informed Dante that the Silent King was honouring Sanguinius and the accord that he wished to strike with him in the ages past. Now Dante immediately reacted, calling the statement a lie, that Sanguinius would never have treated with Zenos. But the attendant countered that the Silent King does not lie, because he doesn't speak, at least not to Dante, and that Sanguinius, who they refer to as the Angel Father, would have seen the wisdom in an alliance to deal with the Tyranids. And well, therein the mystery lies. Since then, we've been left to theories and speculation on just what their relationship may or may not have been. So what is the truth? Did Sanguinius and the Silent King actually encounter each other in some way? Did Sanguinius treaty with the Necrons? Well, let's begin with the no argument. Technically, the Necrons don't actually state that they did meet merely that the Silent King wished to strike an accord with him. There's no exact statement claiming they did, nor any further mention of when it transpired. It's merely implied in the statement, and then further reinforced by claiming Sanguinius would have seen the wisdom in an alliance now. So, while it may be implied, and kind of giving the feeling that there is some relationship there, that's certainly no proof. There's also the fact that if anyone would have been aware of Sanguinius encountering a figure such as the Silent King, well then surely it would have been the Blood Angels, his sons. While a lot of the Imperium's history has been lost to myth over the years, Sanguinius in particular seems to have been a fairly enthusiastic writer. Yes, a lot of it more focused on his visions and prophecy of the future, with his fabled scrolls of Sanguinius, but I'd be willing to bet he recorded a lot of his past within those scrolls as well. And if anyone alive would have known of Sanguinius interacting with the Silent King, then it absolutely would have been Dante. And the simple fact is, this is a shock to Dante. We also then have to take into account the time frame as well. If such an encounter would have transpired, then it must have happened during the Great Crusade, because the Heresy series has given us a clear timeline of Sanguinius's journey during that. So for me, this raises two problems. Firstly, the Great Crusade takes place during Sarek's exile out into the void. The Silent King departed the galaxy after ordering his race into their great hibernation, a self-imposed exile to atone for his great mistake, dooming his people to an eternity as metal slaves. If this story is to be believed, he didn't return to the galaxy until after encountering the Tyranid threat. And while the exact date of his return is dubious, it was much closer to the current timeline. Of course, this could all be explained by the fact that the Silent King's exile never actually took place as he claims after all. Secondly, 
We need to take into account just what a time the Great Crusade was. Having been blessed by the Heresy series, sometimes I think we become a bit numb to just what an age of glory for the Imperium the Crusade was. This was the Imperium at its zenith. The Emperor was leading mankind's armies across the stars. There were 18 Primarchs, 18 walking amongst the stars, demolishing anything and everything that stood in their way. The legions of the Adeptus Astartes were all conquering. While the Silent King may be a prominent individual for us now, a mythical being almost beyond compare, I don't think that would have been the case had he rocked up during the Great Crusade. This was the Primarchs and Legions at their peak. A Xeno race turning up and claiming himself King of the Galaxy, I don't think that would have gone down too well, particularly depending on the Primarch and Legion he encountered. In fact, I think he would have promptly found himself on the receiving end of a Primarch and Legion beatdown. Rebute Gilliman may have revealed his history treating with Eldrad over the centuries, but I'm not sure I can buy Sanguinius doing the same thing. Gilliman is all about his theoreticals and practicals. In many ways for me, he seems more willing to compromise and adapt his views depending on the situation. For me, I see Sanguinius as far more literal to his father's vision. Now, I know that may sound a bit hypocritical given Sanguinius becoming Emperor of Imperium Secundus. However, for me, I could imagine Gilliman at least having a parlay with the Silent King, even if just to learn what he could on this person and situation. For Sanguinius, I just can't imagine it. I see him as one of the Primarchs who promptly tells this Silent King, there is only one king of this galaxy, and he is the Emperor of Mankind. But again, that's just my personal feeling. So, what of yes? Could Sanguinius and the Silent King actually have met? Well, for all the reasons why not, there isn't equally any factual evidence to say they didn't. The simple fact is, as far as the evidence goes, it has to remain a possibility. So the Silent King was supposed to be off during exile whilst the Great Crusade was underway. Well, I'm not technically sure I've ever believed that that was the full truth anyway. As we know, my loyalties lie with Imhotek and his dynasty, and there are more than a few mysteries behind the Silent King's true motives. He is a master of propaganda. Maybe he simply returned to the galaxy sooner than we've been led to believe, returning to find this new race of man dominating the galaxy. Perhaps he had to bide his time until after the heresy had removed the Emperor and his Primarchs from the playing field, given him time for his people to awaken. Considering it was only 10,000 years for the time of awakening to truly begin, it certainly is possible. The Necrons don't view the passage of time quite the same as us mortal humans do. Had he been within the galaxy? Well, it's also certainly possible that he may well have approached a Primarch given their status. Maybe Sanguinius was crusading within a particular territory, something Sarek wanted to protect. Maybe rather than within the void, he was secretly waiting within a tomb world. One that perhaps Sanguinius found or perhaps came within close proximity too. Perhaps the Silent King even wanted to approach Sanguinius regarding the Tyranid threat. At this point in time, we simply don't know. 
And for all my personal feelings on Sanguinius not being too welcoming to anyone claiming to be a king of a certain infinite empire, well, I do have to admit he can be very reasonable and accommodating at times. It is certainly possible Sanguinius could be open to a parlay before any battle is commenced. At the end of the day, we just can't say for a fact that it didn't happen. We cannot rule out the possibility. So, given the facts, what is the most probable? Well, we're all going to have our own opinions on this as ever, so as always, drop your own thoughts down below. For me, the fact that the Necrons don't definitively state that they did meet Sanguinius is quite telling. That the Silent King is wearing the mask of Sanguinius to honour him and the accord they wished to make with him. On its own, this statement is far less definitive. It's the following claim of the Silent King not lying that makes you think, well, okay, this happened. And so it's really this phrasing that makes me think it just can't have happened. And I know, that's a bit of a contradiction, but let me explain why. The reason I'm really leaning this way is because, as we discussed, any meeting surely must have transpired within the Great Crusade. A time when the galaxy was being claimed for humanity. Had Sanguinius and the Silent King met, with Sarek making some offer of accord between the two, it must have been rejected, given the statement wished to make with him. So, if Sanguinius and the Blood Angels were encountered by a race of Xenos during the Great Crusade, claiming to be a Silent King of the Infinite Empire, and they rejected their offer, how is the Silent King still alive? Would Sanguinius and the Blood Angels simply have let them leave peacefully? Or more likely, would Sanguinius have made a counteroffer at the end of his sword? I mean, the entire premise of the Great Crusade was to claim the galaxy for the race of mankind. Why on earth would Sanguinius have let a so-called ruler of a rival Xeno Empire live? It just doesn't make sense. Because he wouldn't. Let's keep in mind the Necrons believe every other race are lesser to them. Even the Emperor and his Primarchs. And this comes across in a very clear way when they speak and act an overriding arrogance. They just can't help themselves. Do we really think Sanguinius would have put up with that? And given that likely outcome had Sanguinius rejected any offer, why on earth would the Silent King be looking to honour Sanguinius now, had he somehow managed to escape with his life? So for me, that's why the wished tense of the phrasing has to mean exactly that. An accord that they would have liked to have made, but one that simply didn't arise. Whether events of the heresy intervened, or perhaps because the Silent King was truly within his exile, and so his only learning of the human's history in a past tense. The Silent King isn't lying because he's speaking the truth he would have wished to make an accord with Sanguinius. He just never met him. It was all a ruse and ploy to deal with the angel father's son, Dante. And it has to be said, it worked. But as always everyone, what do you think? What do you think of the Silent King's mention of Sanguinius? Why do you feel he was honouring him in this interaction with Dante? Did Sanguinius truly meet with the Silent King? And were the Necrons seeking to strike some kind of accord with him? If the Angel did meet with the Silent King, 
then why is the Silent King still alive now? Why would Sanguinius not had his legion wipe out Sarek? As always, leave your thoughts in the comments below, I love to read them. Huge thank you to all my subscribers, your support truly means a lot to me, it really does. And if you're new, please consider subscribing to help the channel grow. If you enjoyed this particular vid, then why not drop a like on it too? But with that said, I am off, and I'll see you all again real soon.